It took me one and a half years to go from zero income to millionaire. But since then, all the global financial markets have had an utter meltdown. The stock market collapsed, the crypto markets collapsed, and we're facing an economic disaster unseen in our lifetime. And to me, this crazy, harsh economic environment is kind of like the ultimate opportunity to push myself and see what I'm really made of and what I'm really capable of. Legends aren't made when the sun's shining and the, the grass is green and the butterflies are landing on people's noses and everyone's laughing you know, on park benches and feeding birds. Legends are made when you're surrounded by molten lava, when arrows are raining down from above, you got like armies in front of you and the odds are stacked against you. You got your sword in your hand, you're facing them down like the hot air is like breathing into your face of from the volcano and you're just staring down and you're, and you're, and you're looking, you, you got your back against the wall and you know there's only one way out and that's forward. And that's, that's when legends are forged in those kind of moments. And I feel like this is one of those kind of moments economically and financially. And so I am excited. I'm excited to see what I'm truly capable of. So I'm continuing my journey from zero income to a new goal of a hundred million dollars. And I'm gonna do it in the worst economic environment we've seen in our lifetime. And this video is my master plan for exactly how I plan to get there. Real quick though, for those of you who didn't follow my original journey to a million, here's a quick recap. I used to be a wedding videographer, but I lost my business after COVID happened and they did the shutdowns and suddenly everyone stopped getting married. With five kids and a wife who's a stay-at-home mom, things got pretty terrifying. We started running out of money really quickly. I started getting really depressed. I started eating a lot of waffles with chocolate chips in them and they were really good. And I started playing a lot of Minecraft and building like cool little secret passages and experimenting with redstone. And I really had nothing else to do except for be depressed, eat waffles and just feel really sorry for myself. But eventually my wife snapped me out of it. She kind of slapped me in the face a couple times. It's not true, she didn't actually slap me in the face, but she like verbally slapped me in the face in a really kind way and said, hey, you know what, you need to get off your butt. Stop eating all these waffles. I know they taste really good, but you need to stop eating them. Stop playing Minecraft and go do something with your life. And she was right and I knew she was right and you know, kind of shook me out of it, got me back in the game mentally. And I started thinking, you know what, I need to figure out something different. Because it does look like these weddings are coming back anytime soon, so I need to forge a new path forward. I started educating myself, reading books, trying side hustles, and I documented my journey on TikTok and I called it the one to one million project. And my goal was to make a million dollars in profit in just one year. I spent the next year hustling, trying a ridiculous amount of side hustles and making a lot of really dumb mistakes, like one time when I took out a bunch of margin on my crypto assets like the day before the entire market crashed and I lost an insane amount of money. But after an entire year of working harder than I had in my entire life, I was only able to make it to $147,000. I had failed at reaching my million dollar goal, but I had succeeded at making enough money to take care of my family. I'd also been able to build up a massive audience on TikTok and YouTube along the way, which is something I had never had before. I didn't have any sort of social media following before all this, so that was also a bonus. During my second year of my challenge, I decided to continue toward my million dollar goal. In my second year, I decided to go all in on crypto. And after just six months, I was able to go from $147,000 to 1.6 million dollars. If you want a more in-depth recap of my journey to a million, I made an entire video about it. There's a card up above, you can click it and watch the entire journey if you want to, as well as I share a ton of videos on my channel with the exact tactics and principles that I used to get there. Okay, so that's where I left off my journey and everyone that's followed along so far, that's the last you kind of heard about my journey to a million. But since then, a lot has happened. For one, we had an entire global meltdown of all investment assets where we saw the stock market and the crypto market utterly collapse. Luckily though, before all this had happened, I had been smart enough to take all my profit and put it into a stable coin. And for those of you who don't know what stable coins are, they're supposed to be safe, stable crypto assets that don't move up or down in price. They're essentially pegged to a dollar. So it'd be the equivalent of like selling off your stocks and putting it into dollars in your bank account. I had decided to make the super safe play and I took all my profits and I stuck them into what was considered DeFi super safe savings account. It was something that was used industry-wide by projects, investors, millionaires, billionaires to store their money safely for a stable, consistent yield. The savings account I used was called Anchor and the stable coin I'd put all my money into was called UST. And it turned out that it wasn't safe at all. And on the morning of May 10th, the entire crypto industry watched in horror as UST slowly collapsed, tanking the entire crypto industry with it. I was fortunate enough to see the writing on the wall and I sold my UST early on during the collapse. Taking 
taking a massive loss, but saving a good amount of my capital. On top of all this, I held $150,000 in a token called Luna. And with the collapse of UST, because of the way it worked, Luna collapsed with it. And due to the nature of the way that Luna staking works, if you have your funds staked, it takes 21 days to unstake those funds. And because of that, I wasn't able to sell my Luna when all this was happening. So I had to sit there and watch as my $150,000 turned into less than a cent almost overnight. And even broader than all this, the entire market was dropping massively and every asset I held was plummeting in value to where my $1.6 million eventually fell back below a million. Meaning I only got to be a millionaire for about two months before of course, the entire global economy has a freaking meltdown and I lose my millionaire status and you know, like it just has to happen right after I finally achieve my goal. Like I, I achieve my goal and I'm like, yes, I did this. This is amazing. And then the global financial markets are like, screw you, Jesse. And I could sit here and I could complain about it and I could feel sorry for myself and I could be like, oh, poor me, you know, or, and I could sit here and dwell on it and be like, oh, if I would have done it this date or if I would have done it this date, you know, look how much better off I'd be. But the reality is this is the situation I'm in. I can't change that. I can't change the hand I was dealt. I was dealt a really stupid, hand this round and you know I got screwed on it and I, there's nothing I can do to change that and there's no point in me dwelling or complaining about it. You are where you are and you have what you have. That's a fact. The only thing you get to control is what you do next. So instead of looking backwards, I'm looking forward and assessing the changing playing field, assessing what resources I have, and coming up with a game plan for the new environment I'm in. And although I don't have $1.6 million or even a million dollars to work with anymore, one thing that wasn't taken away from me during this whole, you know, epic, massive crash has been all the principles and knowledge I've acquired along the way. Those are the things that have gotten me to where I'm at, and those are the things that are gonna get me from where I'm at to my hundred million dollar goal. Those are like permanent upgrades to my wealth building arsenal that can't be taken away from me. I've spent a ridiculous amount of time reading books on success, entrepreneurship, investing, finance, uh, mindset, and all kinds of other things. And those are the things that give me an unfair advantage at everything I try to do. And one of the biggest things I've learned along the way is that the average person doesn't build these massive fortunes. They don't become insanely successful. Only the outliers do. Meaning that if I want to succeed on this insane level, I can't think the same way that the average person does. I can't think the same way that the rest of the market does. I have to think differently. If everyone else is running for the hill, scared out of their minds when the market is collapsing, I need to be sorting through the rubble looking for opportunities. And when everyone else is scared into inaction, I need to be taking massive amounts of action and charging forward. Opportunities are often found when every everyone else has left. And these massive financial disasters are often hiding huge life-changing opportunities for those who are brave enough and wise enough to go looking for them. And I know that this market is no different. They're gonna be completely ordinary people today who amass fortunes because of some hidden opportunity that they discovered during this financial crisis that nobody else sees because they're too busy hiding like everyone else. And don't get me wrong, the market is currently bleak and I don't see it going back up anytime soon, not unless we have a massive shift in the rate of inflation or a massive shift in the way that the Fed handles inflation. Right now, we have the war in Ukraine that's causing everything from gas prices to food to absolutely skyrocket. On top of that, we're still dealing with the effects of COVID lockdowns and how that affected the global supply chain. And not to mention the ridiculous, unprecedented amount of capital that the US government infused into the market via stimulus checks, PPP loans, and insanely low interest rates. And if you don't understand how any of that works, basically inflation means that all the things you'd buy day to day are going up in price. They cost more to buy now because of some sort of outside factor that's driving up that price. In this case, Ukraine supplies a lot of the world's wheat. And because, you know, Ukraine's in this war, uh, you know, that wheat isn't getting supplied to the world, which is driving up food prices because so much food uses wheat, as well as Russia supplies a lot of the world's oil. And without that oil from Russia, it's driving up the price of gas. And obviously like everything uses gas. Like if you buy something from Amazon, it has to go on a truck 
they use this gas to deliver that to you. So it's causing the price of everything to go up because they're having to account for these higher gas prices. And the supply chain shortages we're experiencing from COVID lockdowns is basically the same thing. Because people stopped working during COVID lockdowns, there's still a lot of catching up that needs to be done. So like companies fell behind on producing the things that they normally produce. And because of that, we don't have enough of those things. For example, say you have a company that makes microchips. Well, those microchips are used in cars, phones, and all kinds of things. And if there's not enough of those microchips, that means they can't make enough cars and phones to meet demand, which drives up the price of those things. And when the US government sent everyone these stimulus checks, well, they used those checks to go out and buy things, which caused even more demand for things like cars and phones, which were already in short supply, therefore driving up the price of those things even more. If you've ever experienced a Christmas season where there's a new Xbox or a new PlayStation, then you've experienced something similar where these things end up selling out really quick and so parents like desperate to get this the new Xbox for their kids will go on eBay and pay like 10x the price for this Xbox because you know there's a shortage of Xboxes and that's the only way they can get it. So it drives up the price. And all of that is inflation and it can actually get really out of control and become this really bad vicious cycle. So one of the Fed's jobs is to stop inflation. And they do this by raising interest rates, making it hard to borrow money. And when it's hard to borrow money, less people are buying houses, less people are buying new cars, and less people are starting new businesses. Therefore, there's less money coming into the economy. And all this slows down growth, it slows down people people spending money and if people are spending less money, it causes all stocks to drop in value because for one, they're not buying stocks, but for two, those companies are going to make less money because people aren't spending as much money. And so that causes the, the value of those stocks to go down lower, which is why currently everything from stocks to crypto has absolutely collapsed because the Fed keeps raising these interest rates. And with people spending less money, they're now not buying as many things. And that allows supply chain shortages to not be squeezed as hard, which gives those things time to catch up and slows down inflation. And all that being said, it means things are unlikely to look up anytime soon. Inflation isn't likely to go down until the war in Ukraine is over and supply chain shortages have caught up. I do think though, eventually we'll see both those things happen and the markets will of course start going back up. So with that in mind, I'm working as hard as possible to get myself set up for when that day comes. And in my mind, during this first leg of my journey, I have two main goals. The first one is to build businesses that solve real problems provide real value and get me cash flow in the bank. Cash flow is really, really important for my plan. And if you don't know what cash flow is, it's basically money from your business that you can put into your bank. As opposed to if you started a business and it's valued at a million dollars, well, you'd have to sell that business to actually get that million dollars in cash. Or say you bought a piece of real estate and it went up $200,000 in value. Well, you don't have that $200,000 of value in your bank. It's locked into that house unless you take out an equity loan or actually sell that house. Phase two of my journey is to then take that capital I've made for my business and use it to invest. I believe the markets will turn around eventually and I wanna be able to scoop up really good investments at rock bottom prices. And that's it. I'm gonna build businesses that provide me cash flow and then I'm gonna take that money that I make from those businesses and invest it into good investments at rock bottom prices. And obviously that might be a simple plan, but it's not exactly easy. The hard part is in deciding what businesses I wanna build, how I'm gonna build them, how I'm gonna attract customers to actually buy whatever product or service that I'm creating with these businesses and what you know investments I'm actually gonna invest into. It's going to take a lot of work and it's gonna take a lot of me leveling up myself again to an even higher level to where I'm capable of accomplishing all that I'm setting out to accomplish. But I'm gonna be documenting my entire journey here and sharing it with all of you guys. All of the wins, all of the failures, all of the lessons that I'm learning along the way and everything in between. And I can guarantee and call it right now that there's going to be some massive failures along the way. I do not expect to get to $100 million perfectly without failing massively along the way. Part of growing and part of becoming better means embracing failure and recognizing that that's just gonna happen. It's gonna happen when you take risks and when you really push yourself. Failure is kind of like the, the fire that forges you into something stronger. And I don't expect it to be any different on my journey to 100 million. And really quick, I just wanted to take a second to explain how my channel layout's gonna go. For those of you who are wanting to follow along and kind of know where you're supposed to look for certain things. At the top of my channel, you're gonna see a playlist called one to one million strategies. And these are gonna be the most important videos that I make. They're essentially the foundation 
foundational principles or the level ups that have allowed me to succeed in my journey so far. And that's where I'm gonna be documenting and recording any principles and level ups I'm learning along the way that are gonna allow me to get to my $100 million goal. Under that section, you have crazy crypto experiments. These are experiments that I do occasionally to test out wild income ideas and see if they work. These experiments are not meant to be copied. They're just ways for you to learn about investing concepts, investing wins and investing failures without having to actually put your own capital at risk. Next up, we have the one one million project section, which is where I put any updates on my journey along the way. And lastly, we have the crypto investment section, which is where I talk about the crypto markets and kind of like the trends or like the technology or the things coming out of the crypto markets that I'm paying attention to during my journey. I'm extremely bullish on crypto long term and I'm going to be devoting a lot of my capital into projects over the crypto winter season in hopes of being really set up come next bull run. This next phase of my journey is not going to be easy. It is bleak in the markets out there right now, but I've never been more excited in my life because to me, it's not about the money. It's about the epic challenge. It's about pushing myself. It's about becoming a legend. It's about what happens to me when I'm put under pressure and I go after an insane goal that nobody believes is possible. Can I achieve it? Am I capable of this? Am I, am I able to do what most people consider impossible? And I think the answer is yes. I think I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to accomplish this crazy task in my head that I'm going after because nothing's going to stop me. I will, I will not stop. I will keep pushing forward until I'm 50, 60, 80 years old. I have my staff, I'll have my beard, my long flowing hair, my cloak like Gandalf. I'll be like roaming through the financial world, smacking people in the face, trying to get to my $100 million goal because I'm not going to let anything stop me. I'm, I'm unstoppable. So zero to 100 million, here I come, nothing's stopping me. I can't wait. If this video is helpful, make sure to hit that like button. And if you have any questions or comments or maybe a, maybe a little quote for me, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you wanna follow along my journey, if you wanna see my beautiful beard that I end up growing or maybe my flowing long mane, or maybe you wanna see the staff. You wanna see me, you wanna follow me till I'm 80 years old and see if I make it to my journey's end. Well then hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell. Let's go, we're gonna, we're gonna see what happens. I don't know what's gonna happen. This is gonna be insane, it's gonna be crazy. I'm ready to face a hurricane, a straight up hur like level eight hurricane. I don't even know if that's a thing. I think they only go up to level five, but the one I'm gonna face is gonna be level eight. I'm gonna battle in the, as an 80 year old, and I'm going to dominate zero to 100 million. Thanks for watching. See you next week.